It's the end of the week. So grab your drinks, cuddle close up to the television because it is time for Last Call. Hey, what's going on, guys? Brian Jack with Submance Comics, and this is The Last Call. That's right. We're talking about those comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. We do this each and every week, giving you guys our picks for comics that are hitting that final order cutoff so you know so you can get those orders in and guarantee your copy and possibly get that highest discount. Right, Jack? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It helps out the retailers, lets them be able to predict orders, as well as helps you out not only in price, but like you mentioned, locking in that copy. So you don't have to play that Wednesday Warrior game. Plus, it's also valuable to you, the viewer, because these are a lot of these books that we end up talking weeks down the road on that Bolo show. And if you watch now, get those orders in, you'll already have your copies in hand. And we're going to get into that right now, starting with our first pick this week. And we're talking about Dark Knight's Death Metal number three. This has been one fantastic storyline, but this is going to have a lot of great covers too. Art Germ variants, we got that sweet, Ricardo Federici variant, all those are also regular price, but this is just a great story in its own, isn't it, Jack? Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of heat on this one with the Snyder Capullo combo always getting people's attention. Um, you mentioned that Federici variant, that's definitely my favorite of the bunch. Um, also, you're getting the increased trend that we're seeing with DC Comics. They've got an incentive for this one as well. So that's one worth noting. And there will be a bunch of retailer exclusive variants for this one, as we've seen this throughout the series that uh, retailers are buying into this set so much so that they're going beyond issue number one. And if you're trying to make heads or tails of what covers are out there and where they're available and when they go on sale, be sure to head over to exclusivevariants.com for all of that information and so much more. Shifting from DC over to Marvel, we get X-Men number 10. Yes, I know a lot of people are excited for that post-pandemic X-Men return, and here it is with issue number 10. A uh, lot of excitement. We got this Marvel Zombies variants that, while these monthly theme variants haven't necessarily traditionally done well, we've seen of late some of these zombie covers take off, but also we're getting the retailer exclusive treatment all over the place with this one. And our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics at frankiescomics.com. They've got a great Mike Mayhew cover with that awesome X-23 Wolverine on the cover. Um, and there will be several other exclusive variants from various retailers that you can check out on exclusivevariants.com. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. And it's funny because you hear me all the time on the channel go, I'm not a big X-Men fan. I'm not a big X-Men fan. I've been reading the main X-Men title. I don't like all the tie-ins. We've talked about that before. Yeah. X-Men, I'm kind of enjoying this one, especially with the whole Hickman, but still an X-Force guy over X-Men any day. But that Mayhew cover from Frankie's, a lot of people have been talking about that, and it's freaking fire. We're sticking with Marvel for a second. We're sticking with that mutants, and we're going over to X Factor number one. Now, the X Factor originally was a team that consisted of some of the original X-Men, but now we're getting a kind of new look X Factor made with a lot of kind of offshoot characters uh, from the more modern X-Men run. So we're getting North Star, Polaris, Prodigy, iBoy, Dagan, and Prestige. And this new team is the one that I'm more excited about than some of the previous kind of groupings uh, that were associated with X Factor because there's a lot of characters here that haven't been used uh, or underused that could get some attention and spotlight characters like North Star and Dakin. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if people get on board. All, like you we've mentioned, all of the X books seem to have reader buzz. So I expect that to kind of follow into this title. Pivoting back over to DC for a second, we're getting Wonder Woman number 759. This is what a new creative team, kind of a new story arc, and it's got a great Jim Lee cover, as well as a great 
1984 Wonder Woman movie variant, right? Yeah, I think the movie variants gonna get a lot of attention. The Jim Lee variants already getting press um, from a lot of media sources. But it's like you mentioned, new creative team, new arc, new jumping on point. Uh, great time. And I like the legacy numbering with the 759. So, we're, again, we're showing the fact that this is a serious run. This is a major character. And it continues to elevate Wonder Woman, who for a long time was kind of a B or C list character. You can say what you want about the importance of the Trinity within the writing of um, DC Comics, but the reality of what the perception of the character um, on a mainstream level wasn't what it is today. And that is absolutely awesome. It is my youngest daughter's favorite character. And I think that Wonder Woman is going to continue uh, to be a major player for years to come. And there's a lot of anticipation of this movie. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a little while. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm anticipating that movie. We've talked about that before and how great yeah. we think Kristen Wiig is going to play a villain in there. We also talked about how this Wonder Woman movie variant would be great. Although convention season is not going on right now, it would be a great one to pick up. And if you can get a witness Gal Gadot signature on there, it would be a great book to have. Then here we have Legion of Superheroes number seven. Everyone got hyped over number six with the Gold Lantern. We have a one in 25 variant with the Gold Lantern on the cover. Me, myself, I actually like the regular cover B Alex Garner variant, but there's hype on this story right now. What do you have to say about this, Jack? Well, yeah, you know, I hate to be the, the negative Nancy of the group, but, you know, I enjoy this story right, right now. I think this is a great read, and for those reasons, pick up this issue. But as far as that 1 in 25 variant, that, everything that's going on with that book, um, as far as the pricing you're seeing, and I think you're going to see this consistently with these design variants until kind of people back off of it, um, it I, especially since it seems like DC is committed to doing incentive variants consistently going forward. Um, but you had just mentioned to me before we went and started recording that this book is being sold for about $70 right now, which you have to. Um, so a lot of people sit and think, well, the book's going for 70 because that's the supply. And man, that's not really the case. It, to get 25 copies of this book, it's going to cost a retailer about $50 um, to get a 1 in 25 incentive. So if they don't have a lot of faith in their ability to sell the regular issue, which is just a regular issue, it's, there's, you know, it's not a first full appearance because that's what the last issue was. Um, so there's no like cameo first full type deal to bank off of. They're trying to make sure they make their profit through the variant. So they have to charge $70. If you really want that variant, be patient. That book is almost certain to go down. Um, and I do think there's some value because I like the gold lantern character. So I do think there's some value in like the first variant cover featuring the character. Um, but I think that a lot of the pricing that go is going on right now is kind of an, an initial retail price versus what the market is truly demanding. Yeah, I agree. I think it will go down in price. Um, just wait it out. Cause if you get it right now, you have, Especially if you're getting it in your in your personal collection, that's one thing. But if you're getting it to try to sell it, you have no profit. profit you have no profit margin to begin with, really. No. So far, you probably wondered why we haven't shown any any comics for final order cutoff. That's not because there aren't any. That's because we have a brand new segment to introduce to this show, and we are calling it the Indie Showcase. It's going to be brought to you each and every week by Black Cape Comics. Black Cape Comics is an amazing retail store that specializes in a lot of these independent and small press comics. Be sure to head to blackcapecomics.com and put all your FOC orders in, as well as check out the great new release titles and those exclusive Black Cape Comics variants that they sell exclusively on the site. Here we have from Boom Studios, it's a brand new series, but not brand new to comics. We're talking about that popular video game, Mega Man, and this is Mega Man Fully Charged number one. Now, Mega Man was one of my favorite Nintendo games growing up, but this series focuses on the animated series by the same title. And with this, we're getting a brand new licensed product from Boom Studios. 
and just like a lot of the other great licensed books from Boom Studios, we're seeing that full marketing push behind these incentive variants coming with a 1 in 50 and a 1 in 100 variant for this title. Yeah, I've been a big fan of the video game series. Haven't watched the animated. My kids have started watching it. And it's funny is my kids also tried to play the video game version. They don't, they don't realize how hard those games were back then. Yeah. But either way, like you said, there's some monster variants for this. So it's just something that you want to get right now. Make sure you get those pre-orders in before FOC. Absolutely. Especially those high ratio variants, because I can't see a ton of retailers stocking those one in 100s. Here we have that Texas Blood issue number two. We talked about issue number one on last call. It was just released and it's gotten great reviews. I definitely enjoyed it. So we're definitely having issue number two on here. And the great thing is number two kicks off a brand new story arc already. It's going to have two covers for it as well. That's right. And both covers are available for pre-order right now on BlackCapeComics.com for 15% off cover price. So those are our picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. But we have some more for you, just like we did in the past. We actually have second prints starting to hit final order cutoff. And Jack's going to tell you about them right now. That's right. Those late printings are back. And we just told you on three up, three down, that that Thor Donny Cates run is red hot. So no surprise that we get Thor number five, the second print, as well as Thor number two, the third print. And that's coming along with Marvel Action Avengers number 10. The second print, that's the IDW All Ages series. Strange Academy number one comes with a second print. Star Wars number three with a second print. Uh, Star Wars Bounty Hunters number one comes with a second print. Star Wars Kylo Ren number one comes with his fourth printing. And Darth Vader number two comes with the second printing, as well as the All Ages IDW Star Wars Clone Wars number one comes with a second print. So there it is, guys. Those are our picks plus those later printings. Make sure you get those orders in Monday night before final order cutoff. Contact your LCS. Get the orders in online. Also, we talked about some of those retail exclusives. Make sure you guys check out exclusivevariants.com so you can see everything that's available from those retailers in one centralized location. This has been Jack and Brian with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.